Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Well, today I'm going to go to the supermarket and probably the butcher. And while I'm there, I'll be making some recordings for you. So you'll definitely hear those from tomorrow. Uh, About St. Patrick's Day, sadly, I didn't manage to get out to many of the celebrations. So I didn't make any recordings, but uh, this week I'll be doing some different things. I'm not actually working on Thursday. Uh, I have a few things to do. So I'll be over in our capital city of Edinburgh. So I'll definitely make some podcasts there as well. Well, today is very exciting because I want to tell you all about our English breakfast. Now, for those of you who know what an English breakfast is, you'll know it's a bit of a killer (laughs) because it's deep fried and it has, uh, let me think now, it has beans, eggs, sausage, hash browns, black pudding, and you can add other things like fried mushrooms, um, Some people even have chips, and of course there's eggs with it. And you might be thinking, well, is that really what British people eat every morning? Um, And I think the answer to that is uh, we did eat that every morning because, remember, we were an industrial country, so our men used to be going out to factories and to be working early in the morning to do hard manual labor. So they needed to have a heavy breakfast inside them. And these days, people have those kind of breakfasts after a night out. So if they were out at the pub all night drinking, then they would... Uh, need a breakfast like that the next day to line their stomach. So those were the two purposes of the breakfast. One was for the workers going out. There was a belief that a good breakfast was needed. In fact, did you know that Margaret Thatcher, she used to get up in the morning and make her husband, Dennis, this massive big breakfast every day. The same for the kids. Isn't that amazing? But uh, I don't eat breakfast now. I mean, there's no reason to. I'm only at home. If I have a huge breakfast, it'll just sit in my belly all day because I don't take so much exercise because I'm, well, I'm in front of the screen all day. So I don't, uh, I don't need that. But anyway, I'm telling you all of this because the big breakfast as... Uh, it is sometimes known, or the English breakfast or the British breakfast, uh, is now available in a can. That's right. You can buy a tin of the big breakfast. Isn't that strange? And they've they've actually baked it into a pie. Oh, it it doesn't sound very exciting, does it? Uh, so basically, this company Frey Bentos. These are the people who do pies in a can. You just open the can and the pie is there. You even cook it in the can. It's all a little bit weird. So they've decided to do this all-day breakfast. And it's all cooked in pastry. Oh, no. No, I couldn't. But having said that, I do want to try it. So I want to see the vegetarian version, if there is one. Because... Yeah, the, the this big breakfast that English people eat, uh, there's always a vegetarian version. And if Frey Bentos are producing the big breakfast in a pie, then I'm 100% sure they'll be doing a vegetarian version of it because they always do, don't they? So I want to go and try and find that today. That'd be delicious, big breakfast uh, in a pie. I mean, it doesn't sound very healthy, especially if it's in a tin. But, you know, British people, we really don't care much about food. It's not part of our thing. It's not part of our celebrations. We we don't, 
I think it's because we we don't have those kinds of social structures. You know, family for us is nice when you're a child, but food doesn't generally feature as part of that. I mean, I remember when I lived in Spain, uh, people would talk about food for hours, you know, about the exact taste and how it is. And somebody once told me it's because they associate food with memories from when their mother would cook for them. But honestly, I couldn't remember anything my mother made. In fact, it's only now, I'm in my 50s, that I'm beginning to actually taste food. For me, food was what you fill your belly with. It, it didn't have any sentimental value to it. Um, but I, I don't know. I don't associate food with parties, with birthdays, with parents. Food for me is just that thing that you do because you have to eat when you're not working, you know? Although now, now that... Uh, uh, I'm married to a Latin person. Suddenly food has became the center of my universe. And it is all about taste and getting things perfect. But I still don't really appreciate it. And I still don't understand the the love of food. Um, I mean, I was listening to a telephone conversation the other day with family members, uh, my in-laws... And I was hearing things like, in Spanish, of course, I was hearing things like, oh, my goodness, oh, mamma mia, oh, muy mal, which means very bad. And I thought, oh, maybe someone's died or maybe something's wrong because, I mean, they, <laughs> they are getting on in years. I mean, I'm 50. Uh, so anyway, uh, this this conversation uh, was continuing, oh, muy mal, oh, very bad, oh, oh, terrible, oh, that's awful. And I thought, oh, dear, that sounds serious. Maybe maybe something terrible has happened. And it was only because somebody had forgotten to buy salt. And I'm thinking, is, is that really worth the drama, someone not buying salt? So anyway, yeah, it seems that some people in the world can talk about food for years. I I never could do that. I don't really, I mean, if, if I go to someone's house and they give me food and I eat it, they look at me, and I'm, I'm talking, of course, here about uh, people who are not British, okay? So you go to someone's, someone's house, you eat the food, and then you get the interview. So, what did you think of my mother's omelette? So, how did the food taste in comparison with other people's? And I'm thinking, hmm... I didn't really taste it, sorry. <laughs> uh, I was just enjoying the company, but food for me isn't something something fantastic. I mean, I have to say, now I'm baking more and I'm able to see the joy of producing foods because I think in the past, I went to the supermarket, buy it in a can and eat it, now I'm beginning to see the joy of actually looking after myself with cooking and looking after the family. And cooking for other people makes it even more attractive. So that kind of thing is really, really good. Um, I love that. But um, oh. anyway, getting back to my point, well, Frey Bentos are producing this uh, in a can all day breakfast. So I'm looking forward to trying the vegetarian version of that. So if you can get that in your country, <laughs> uh, if you want to try it, uh, you can. Just to warn you, though, it's not going to be healthy. I mean, tinned food never is. Oh, listen to me talking about canned food not being healthy. <laughs> the man who doesn't taste. Well, that's it from me. I hope you've enjoyed this. There will be more outdoor events coming from tomorrow. Supermarket Butcher and then Edinburgh on Thursday. It's all happening. So stay tuned. See you all soon. Thank you. Bye.